2024 Vuelta España with the last two big mountain stages to come Friday and Saturday before the Sunday TT and maybe many wouldn't have expected big moves here today in stage 18. I'm here just outside of Maestu up here in the natural park of Iski deep in the Basque country where Uku Barrede won from a massive escape winning for the second division Kern Pharma team bagging their third win in this 2024 edition and I can tell you there were some changes in the general classification fight behind namely Mikel Landa dropping five spots in the overall classification and I'll get to that and I'll explain how this stage involved extinction and super glue but first let's talk about this massive escape 42 riders on the day when it formed Almost every team was represented, but Decathlon, the lead team with Ben O'Connor in the red jersey, Intermarche, and Escutel Uscati were racing in their home region. They missed out big time. That move was taking off and no one was gonna stop it. Some counter moves behind with Uscati riders tried to get across, nothing was successful. In that move, we saw three men try to get away and yeah, that included Schmidt, it included Kung, it included Vacek. All three of those riders didn't have teammates in that massive group, but in that massive group, there were numbers. Decathlon didn't have riders, but second place overall, Primus Roglic had three riders up there and Moss, Enrique Moss, setting third place overall. Movistar, his team had two riders and crucially, Richard Carapaz, who sets fourth place overall, he also had two riders up there, James Shaw and Owain Duell. Now we get rolling onto this stage, the categorized two climb and the categorized one climb before the finish here in the natural park. Now that categorized one climb, it blew things apart. We saw an attack from Sugarman, Carlos Rodriguez. We saw an attack from Salt Bay, David Gadu from Groupama FDJ. And then the attack came from the Ecuadorian rider, former Giro d'Italia winner from EF Education, Richard Carapaz. And at that time, the cameras looked back. We saw Mikel Landa on the ropes and then we saw right there as well, Ben O'Connor on the ropes as well, but Mikel Landa was in trouble. Ben O'Connor would get back to the group, no problemo. And I spoke with Primoz Roglic at the finish. If he thought about setting his Red Bull troops to the front at that point to put Ben O'Connor in some danger, but he said, ah, oh, there's some hard days to come. No, not today. But EF Education, you could see they had a plan and they were ready to school the riders. With their riders up front, Shaw and Duel. They dropped back and they had to wait some time for the GC group to catch him. They dropped back to join the attacks. Richard Carapaz was on a ripper. And while well, he was dropping a rider who was already behind him in the GC, but EF Education was hoping really to school the whole GC bunch and really crack the whole general classification wide open because who knows, it's only five seconds difference between Roglic and race leader Ben O'Connor and it's tightly packed there when we're looking at third to fourth and so on with Richard Carapaz setting fourth place overall at the start of the day. So riders were scattered all over the road and Mikel Landa was losing out big time. And many of us are scratching our heads while Landa, who had riders up in front, Catano and Casper Pedersen, they didn't drop those riders back earlier on T-Rex quick step to help out their race leader. Eventually, Casper Pedersen would get back there, but Catania would stay up there for some time. They were helping out Mikel Landa, but Landa, well, his Vuelta classification hopes, he was setting fifth overall at the start of the day. They were going up in smoke. And up front, well, it was gonna be a fight from that classification group because they had enough time in hand to fight for it. 13 is unlucky for some riders in the peloton, but that was the lucky escape number when we were heading in to that final kicker that topped out around three kilometers to go. Not a classified climb, but dang, this Tour of Spain is littered with unclassified climbs all along. And on that climb, we saw Steven Kreuzwick light it up, the Dutch rider from Team Visma Lisa bike. It didn't come to nothing, but it countered right away from Barrede. Now that team had three riders in there. Also, Pa Miguel, and Pablo Castrillo. Castrillo already winning two stages in this Vuelta España. They had a fourth rider in there earlier on, but he was no longer there. So they had the numbers in that 13 man move and they needed to make it work out. And that's crazy to think for a second division team. Well, there we go, Barrede up the road and no one was gonna catch him again. When he topped over that climb heading to the final kilometer, 
as it is always in cycling. Riders are looking around and no one's wanting to do the work. We talked to Schmid, the Swiss champion, riding for Jay Kualula afterwards, and he says at some point everybody just starts thinking about the sprint for second place, and that's what Schmid did. Otherwise, up front, well, it was Barrede celebrating a victory, his first ever professional victory, and it's massive. Massive for him. He comes from Navarra nearby, and that's, of course, the base of the Kern Pharma team, second division team, winning three stages so far in this Vuelta España. You might be as surprised as I am because they're beating World Tour teams with massive big budgets, three, five times as much. Teams that include Ineos Grenadiers who need a stage victory, Bahrain Victorious who need a stage victory, and they're winning three. They're taking home three stage wins. It's impressive. It's incredible. Behind, we had Mikel Landa fighting to save himself, but he couldn't do it. Coming in here to the finish line, the GC remained the same, except for Mikel Landa, losing around three and a half minutes on the day, falling from fifth place overall to deep 10th place overall. And the real burner here is that it happened on home soil. He's Basque, riding in the Basque country. And I spoke with him this morning, and he says that he's motivated by the Basque fans out there with their red, white, and green Scotty flags waving and cheering him on. But today, none of those cheers, none of those flags could do anything to help Mikel Landa, who lost three and a half minutes on the day. And Shaw and Duel, what massive work they did for Richard Carapaz, really blowing things up and making a heck of a race out of stage 18. And remember I said that we talk about extinction and super glue? Well, for the Vuelta España, Sudal Quickstep renamed their team T-Rex Quickstep because here in Spain, they have a local product associated with their companies named T-Rex, which is a super glue. And well, like the dinosaur, today Mikel Landa's hopes for the GC became extinct and no amount of super glue could keep him intact in the GC battle. This stage 18, Kern Pharma with their third stage victory in the Vuelta with Perede and EF Education with Richard Carapaz schooling everyone.